Welcome back. Welcome back. Do you need to do a walkthrough prior to closing? The answer is yes. And if you'll stay tuned for this segment of the show, we're going to uh, get rid of some common misconceptions about walkthroughs on the seller side and the buyer side when somebody is buying or selling a home in Atlanta. You're listening to your Move Atlanta. It is our goal to help you buy and sell Atlanta homes with total, total confidence. If you want to get the podcast of the show, it's easy. You can go to Apple Podcast. You can go to Stitcher. You can go to SoundCloud. <clears throat> Look for Cleve Gaddis or Your Move Atlanta. That's C L E V E G A D D I S or Your Move Atlanta radio show. Download the podcast. You can you can listen to uh, ten minute segments at your leisure. If you want to communicate with us, YourMoveAtlanta.com is a place to do it. You can request more information. You can ask a question. We'll answer on the air. You can request us to do. Feature your neighborhood in a neighborhood spotlight, which uh, we have a, uh, a uh, let's see here, Ginger in um, Johns Creek who requested a neighborhood spotlight report on Sugar Mill in Johns Creek, and we'll give that later in our show. But let's move on to a listener question. A couple of weeks ago, we had a listener question about whether or not to do a walkthrough, and our answer, a walkthrough is as every buyer should be, they should be concerned about uh, they've put this home under contract, uh, they're going to closing tomorrow, and they should be concerned about whether or not the home is, number one, still there, and number two, if the home is in the right condition, it is in the condition the seller agreed to give them the home in. Now, if you're thinking of selling a home anytime soon or you're thinking of buying a home, you need to listen carefully because you want to handle these things correctly on both sides of the real estate sale because you don't want things to get off track and you don't want one party to be able to have a particular advantage over you because you didn't handle things correctly. That's what most people are worried about doing a real estate deal. And they are nervous. They are anxious. They are worried about what might happen. The buyer's worried. They'll go to closing and come back and find a home that is not in the right shape, meaning it's not in the shape they found it last. And the seller is worried that a buyer is going to come through at the last minute and find a laundry list of things that needs to be done, and it's going to screw up the whole deal. So let me talk about this from both sides. I worked recently with Kevin, sold a home in Duluth, bought a home in Decula. He handled the walkthrough on his sale absolutely perfectly, Because what we did is, before the buyers came through to walk through his home, we knew everything he had committed to in the contract. We reviewed all of the personal property items. We reviewed all the home, every single room. In his case, he didn't have a basement, didn't have a crawl space. We looked at the yard. We looked at the exterior. We reviewed all of the inspection issues. What did the buyer ask for? Was the repair done correctly? And... Does it look good? And then we reviewed the timing of everything. When does a buyer expect you to be out or expect Kevin and his wife to be out? How? When are the movers coming? How is it all going to work? So we reviewed that, and Kevin thought through every single piece. So when the buyers came through to do the walkthrough, there were no nothing in the home. There was nothing found that didn't match the contract. All of the personal property items that were supposed to be removed, Kevin knew he was going to remove them, the ones that were going to stay, stayed. He reviewed the entire home to make sure the buyer had a good experience. He reviewed all of the inspection requests. In this case, the buyers had requested seven or eight items to be done. We had the receipts for everything. He reviewed them to make sure everything was done, and he knew that he was good from a timing standpoint. Now, on the purchase side, remember Kevin is selling a home in Duluth. He's buying a home in Decula. On the purchase side, the story was very, very different. And I will tell you, had Kevin not gone to a walkthrough prior to closing, and I actually went with him myself. I love to do that kind of stuff with a consumer, with a buyer. I love it. I like the fact that they're moving into a home, and I want to make things as clean and as clear as possible. And I know that there might be some issues that are going to be uncomfortable for a buyer to talk about, but they're not uncomfortable for me to discuss. So we go to the walkthrough, 
just a couple of days ago for a closing that took place recently, and we showed up. The seller still got all of their stuff in the house. The closing is supposed to take place the next day. The seller is supposed to be out prior to closing, but the seller's plans are to be out the day after. Now, I don't like talking about this because the reality is, is that sometimes we just need to be aware of what's going on in the market. We need to be, excuse me, we need to be aware of what's going on with another party in a transaction. And if they're not going to do what they're supposed to, we need to know in advance so that we can take steps to protect ourselves. As far as Kevin was concerned, he did not want them staying in the home until Friday. But the reality is he only needed to be able to get into the home afternoon or one o'clock on Friday, even though he should have had possession to the home on Thursday. We also took a, took a look at the contract as we walked through. There were a couple personal property items that were supposed to stay, like, for example, TV mounts. And it, know it, I know it doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you're moving and you plan on having the existing TV mounts remain in the home and you show up after closing and they're gone, those things seem like a big deal. So we were able to clarify for the seller that X stays and X goes to make sure that everybody was well, very well aware. Then we went through, looked at the condition of the home. It looked good. We reviewed the entire home. There was a couple of things that still needed to be done. A thermostat needed to be put back on the wall, things like that. Then we got into the inspection issues. 80% we were in good shape. 20% we were not. So what happened is we realized there were items that were left to be fixed after closing, so we amended the contract to make these items survive closing. We put a time frame in place that said what would be done and by when. And listen to this, Atlanta, here's the kicker. And what would happen if it was not done? So if X, Y, Z was not done in X number of days, then the seller had to give X number of dollars in lieu of those repairs. It also said if he is not out, the seller is not out by a certain time. Because remember, if he stays in too long, it's really going to inconvenience the buyer. And if the seller was not out by a certain time, that he also had to start paying fees to the seller as well. So it didn't work out exactly the way the buyer, our client, wanted it to. But he went in eyes wide open, and he will have no surprises on the day of closing or the day after closing. So when you are looking to buy or sell a home, you need to make sure you use the five-point walkthrough plan prior to closing. Because if you're worried on the seller side or you're worried on the buyer side, if you use that five-point walkthrough plan prior to closing, you're going to have absolutely total confidence so that you can sleep well at night. And that is Key. If you want information on our five-point walkthrough plan prior to closing, go to yourmoveatlanta.com, click on Contact Us, ask us to send you a written copy of it, and we'll be happy to do that. I'll guarantee you it will save you money. A quick interesting note, the mortgage application, the percentage of mortgage applications, the number of mortgage applications increased 6% last week over the prior week. When mortgage purchase applications start going up, that means sales will go up very quickly thereafter. So I think that is a good sign of strength. So if you're worried about the market, I say just relax that the market is probably going to take care of itself. What happened in Metro Atlanta over the last seven days from a real estate standpoint, 2,161 new listings came on the market. You heard that right, 2,161. 1,691 properties had a price decrease. So if you're out there listening, wondering, are there opportunities for me as a buyer to get a deal on a property? I would say there were 1,691 of those last week. 1,852 homes were put under contract, means buyers and sellers came to an agreement on those properties and 1,400, almost 1,495, almost 1,500 closed. If you're out there and you think you need to sell your home, Sometime soon, but you're worried that the coronavirus crisis has forced you or will force you to sell for less or even worse or not different, I should say. It'll take forever and you'll miss your deadlines. I invite you to think again. We can show you how to get the most out of today's market and make your timing work out perfectly, even during a pandemic. 
Plus, our Move Safe certified team will ensure that the entire process is safe for everyone. Just visit yourmoveatlanta.com, Y O U R M O V E, Atlanta.com, and click on Download the Free Guide to Unlock Your Home's Full Value and Make Timing a Non Issue. Stick with us, we'll be back. <laughs> 